Hey everyone, it's Max. I'm back with another quick video. Uh, I've been starting a series of really short videos about uh, interesting Ionic projects, Ionic related projects, capacitor, whatever, just in the Ionic family. Things I think are interesting, give you a little more context uh, around like what we're building, where we're going, why we're doing what we're doing. So last time I did a video on the new Google Maps plugin that we released for Capacitor. And today I'm doing a quick one on the Capacitor Configure project, which is something you may or may not have heard of, uh, but it's a it's actually a project that I built that uh, I think could be really, really useful to you as a app developer, but also to plugin authors, et cetera. So I wanna quickly run through what this is, what it does, how to use it, and uh, where we're going with it. So I think everyone knows like with an app comes a lot of configuration tasks that you have to do, right? You need to maybe change the name of the package, update the bundle ID, um, increment build numbers, all these things, right? And doing that manually is fine if you have just, you do it every once in a while. But if you're building something complicated, if you're building lots of apps, if you're changing configuration a lot, if you're building like a white labeled app, you need to automate the configuration of that app. Uh, if you're if you're building a plugin, if you're installing a plugin, you probably want to automate the configuration of the project to make the plugin work. Um, and so there's a lot of these configuration automation tasks that app developers have, especially at scale. Uh, plugin authors, like I said, they need to often modify their users' apps. And in the Cordova world, we're pretty used to that with the plugin XML and the variables and all that. But in Capacitor, Capacitor hasn't really had that until recently. And then if you're doing like CI, CD workflows, white labeling, um, you often need to kind of make configuration a key part of the build process. So you can solve this a few ways. Uh, the most obvious is just write custom scripts, right? Write some node scripts, write some JS, bash, whatever you run it every time uh, you want to make a change. If you're using Cordova, I think you're, like I said, you're used to that config XML, plugin XML that automatically applies modifications to your project. Um, and then that also comes with things like Cordova hooks to run certain scripts based on like the life cycle of a plugin and project and all that. Um, but we decided to build something for Capacitor because Capacitor didn't have that. And I built this project earlier this year because I was working on a really complicated plugin and like incredibly complicated configuration. And the documentation that I had to write to, to explain to users how to install the plugin was really big and complicated and error prone. And Capacitor has never had this automated configuration tool or feature because with Cordova, that's where most of the developer experience pain came from, was automated configuration. I think we've all been through that experience with Cordova, with Cordova where you install a plugin, you make a change, and the plugin fails to install for whatever reason, or it fails to remove itself. And hey, there's a dangling file here, or you know this symbol's defined twice, uh, et cetera. And I think with hooks especially, hooks are probably one of the biggest sources of plugin install issues that developers have. And so I wanted to build a tool that would enable someone to install this really complicated plugin to not have to deal with the configuration of it for their project, but avoid all those those challenges with, with the Cordova system that I know I've run into in the past, that others have run into in the past. And then along the way, it became something I think much more interesting than I initially anticipated. And I'm really, really excited about it. And I actually think it's going to be really, really useful once more people realize this tool is out there and what it can do. And, and, and I think part of the reason why it, it's been a little bit slower going right now is because the documentation hasn't been there and it's pretty complicated. So I'm working on that and I'll talk about that in a bit. So let's talk about Capacitor Configure. Capacitor Configure is a tool that I released uh, probably like a month or two ago. And it's basically at the core, it's configuration tool and API for managing native iOS and Android projects. So it will automate the configuration of your actual Xcode project, your actual like Android, Android Studio project. And it has two ways that you can use it. You can use it through a tool 
that is configuration driven. So YAML, uh, you write a YAML file or you use a YAML file and it specifies all the changes to make to a native iOS and Android project. Or you can use the API, which the tool uses under the hood to actually write custom scripts, whatever you wanna do. But it abstracts away essentially the native iOS and Android projects and exposes them through a nice clean interface. And then this works really well with CI CD workflow. So if you're using AppFlow, which, which is what we recommend for Cordova and Capacitor uh, CI CD and mobile DevOps builds, you can do things like automatically increment build uh, numbers every time you do a build. So you never run into that issue where you're using the same build number and, and having clashes there. If you want to check this out, go to github.com slash ionic team slash capacitor configure dash configure. So what can this tool do? Because it can actually do a lot and I'm adding tons of features to it all the time. Uh, on iOS, you can configure all the basic build settings of your app. So you can modify uh, different uh, build flags. You can change bundle IDs, um, <clears throat> version numbers, build numbers, all these things. And it's smart and it knows how to uh, support different uh, app targets and, and build types. So you can have like a, a Apple watch target and then the release build, it can, it can enable you to customize things at that granular of a level. Um, so it's really friendly for multi-target builds. It supports all that. Um, it can also modify things like plist files, the PBX project settings, which is how it modifies all those build settings, JSON files, entitlements, uh, random XML files, it can update frameworks. So it can really do a lot. And I'll show you an example later that goes through and use, uses a lot of these features. On Android, there's actually some really powerful capabilities that uh, I wanna call out. First of all, it supports obviously like updating manifest files and it supports either you know modifying attributes, injecting new XML snippets or overriding existing, existing nodes and, and, and subtrees. One of the really cool things is it supports modifying Gradle files. So if you've, if you've written a Cordova plugin in the past, you know that you can insert Gradle code, but, it, but, but the way that that works is it pastes your code in a very specific place in a very specific file. And unfortunately, you can't go and modify something like this specific uh, configuration in the root level build.gradle. It doesn't have that granular of capability. This is different. This actually supports modifying the ar arbitrary Gradle files uh, as long as they're written in Groovy. So it doesn't support Kotlin-based Gradle files yet. That's on the roadmap. But you can do something like actually modify the value of a specific variable. And that's because I, I, I built a Gradle AST parser that will parse the Gradle file, build this AST, abstract, abstract syntax tree, and let you actually modify in place uh, intelligently actual snippets of Gradle code. And so this is really, really powerful. Uh, you can do a lot with it, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, you can update resource files, uh, put new ones in, modify old ones. You can rename packages, and it'll actually rename the packages on disk. So if you want to change the name of the Java Java package for your project, it will go and you know actually rename the, the whole uh, tree of directories and then update the packages in Java and all that. It supports modifying JSON files. So imagine like Google services.json, you can modify that. Properties files, I just added support for that. So like, you know, gradle.properties um, and some other things. So look at Capacitor Configure as just this interface, this tool, this API that can modify and understand all these complexities of traditional native iOS and Android projects. So just to kind of show you what the configure tool does, uh, it is a, uh, a YAML based configuration driven tool and you can run it as a command line tool essentially. And so you, you basically run NPX, uh, capacitor slash configure run, and then you pass it a YAML file. And this YAML file is, uh, YAML is a subset, a superset of JSON. And so it's, you know, should be pretty familiar syntax. It's easy to learn, but it's basically like a, just a configuration file. And so we look at this example here on the right, 
we can see that we we start by defining some variables that the tool is going to understand. So we know bundle ID, uppercase, bundle underscore ID, and package name are two variables. And these can be supplied through environment variables, which is really, really useful. So if there's not a value supplied though, it falls back to a default value. And then under that, we define the platforms and the values, configuration values we're gonna use for each one. <clears throat> So on iOS, we are specifying different targets and we're gonna specify for the app target, which is the main app tar target. Uh, we're gonna set the bundle ID to the value of that variable that was passed in. We're gonna set the version to that version, the build number, the product name, the display name. We're gonna update some build settings and that will actually update the enable bit code and strip Swift symbols uh, build settings for the app target. And we didn't specify a different build type, so it will do it for both debug and release. But, but we could specify just settings for debug and just settings for release builds. And then we're gonna update a plist file, the info plist file. Uh, we're gonna uh, and, uh, insert these various entries. So we're gonna set the NS face ID uses description, update our URL types and URL schemes. And then we're gonna update some entitlements down lower and then it trails off here, but you get the idea. We, we, there's a number of these features that are exposed in this configuration file that you can then use YAML to overwrite. And then, and then when someone runs this command, it will go and actually update your project and it has an interactive run. So it will let you, which I'll show you in the demo in a second, it will let you go and confirm that you actually wanna make those, pro those changes against your project before you do it. So that's one part of it. The second part of it is the capacitor slash project API. And the configuration tool, this tool uses this API under the hood. So you can think of this as just a convenient way to use this API. Uh, but this is a JS slash node API. Uh, it's called uh, the capacitor project API. And it has a class called capacitor project that then just exposes a whole bunch of functionality that you can access. And this is not even remotely exhaustive. You gotta check out the docs if you wanna see all the, all the methods and everything. But kind of going back to our YAML file, we saw that we can update the build number, the product name, the display name. And if we look towards the iOS example here, we can see that we have some of the same things here, like project.ios set version, um, increment the build, uh, all these things. And then uh, <clears throat> we've got an Android example at the bottom where we're actually modifying and inserting a snippet of Gradle code at this specific location in the file. So we're opening the app slash build.gradle, and then we're gonna go find the repositories entry inside of all projects, and then insert these entries to update the repositories for our project. So that's actually a really powerful example of what you can do with the Gradle support. All right, enough talking. Uh, on slides, let's actually go and look at a demo. <clears throat> so I've got this Ionic app here. It's just a basic Ionic app. And I've got this uh, YAML file here. So if we open the YAML file, uh, kind of it just looks like exactly what I pasted in there. We've got some settings we're gonna update for iOS. We're gonna set a bunch of these frameworks here that we're gonna install into the project. And then on Android, we're going to go and update the package name, the version code, update these, uh, make these changes to the manifest file. And, and some of this is just nonsense stuff for testing, but um, we're gonna make a bunch of changes to the manifest file. And then we're gonna update the Gradle file here. And you can see here, we're making a change to the build.gradle file, we're gonna update some of the class paths for the build script entry. And then we're gonna update the app slash build.gradle file and make these changes. And so you can just tell if you've ever done, you know, Cordova's uh, Gradle support, this is considerably more um, complex and capable. It can actually go and modify your actual Gradle source, which is pretty cool. And then we're gonna create this auth config um, JSON file in the, the raw, folder in the resources. So let's go and run this. If we go and entry that, enter that command, npx capacitor slash configure run that 
basic.yaml. This is going to go and read this file and step through and, and figure out all the changes that are going to be made here and print that out to us. So we can see these are the changes that it plans to make. Kind of exactly what I said. It gives you a little bit of a preview uh, so you can make sure it's actually what you want to do. And then it's going to tell you the files that it will actually go and modify. And if you want to apply the changes, just hit yes. It will go and actually make those changes to your project. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple to use. Obviously, if you were going to write a script, you'd write a bunch of JavaScript using the project API, which I'm not showing here. Um, but that file went and go and went and modified uh, the actual settings for the project, which is pretty cool. So if you're a plugin author, I think you absolutely should be using this if you have a complicated plugin. And how you would use it is you would basically create that YAML file like I did that is uh, you know, set up to install your plugin and then distribute that along with your plugin, your NPM package, and either put it in the plugin package itself or give it to users to download themselves, whatever, and then have users run this command here, you know, kind of what I just did, but specify maybe the location of your YAML file in node modules. So node underscore module slash my plugin slash setup dot YAML. They could specify, you know, environment variables. So a lot of Cordova plugins have variables and Cordova has its own system for doing the variables, but we just use environment variables. So if that environment variable exists, it will pull that down. And so have users specify the variables. It's basically the same thing. And then they have automated configuration and setup of their of your plugin in their app. So what's next with this tool? Well, um, first of all, we need to make more people aware of it. I think it's still something that's flying under the radar, but a lot of people would find it useful for white labeling, for CI, CD, and then for plugin authoring. Uh, but we plan to actually bring this to every mobile technology out there. I kind of mentioned that one of the cool things about it is it's just a front end that modifies native iOS and Android projects. So in theory, it can work with every single mobile technology in the market, uh, you know, whether or not you used capacitor or not. And so that's really exciting to us. We're, we're looking into how to do that. Um, that will probably mean uh, the name might change, get a fun logo, but we're gonna be working on a new website, better documentation, uh, the docs are still missing um, some stuff here and there, but uh, you know, if you have questions, any issues, uh, I, I'm actively monitoring and working on this on GitHub. So ask ask a question, file an issue, and I'm happy to help. Uh, some of the next things on the roadmap are adding and modifying source files. So if you want to put a source file into someone's project, working on that, and then. Uh, adding support for Kotlin-based Gradle files. So right now, the Gradle tool only supports Groovy-based Gradle files. So the Kotlin ones, uh, that is a, a longer-term roadmap item, but definitely something I want to do. So uh, let me know. Give it a try. If you have any feedback or questions, again, file an issue on that repo. I would love the discussion. Uh, don't worry about filling out a template or anything. I'm, it's it's you know still early, so um, it's not formalized quite like that. and I'd love to have the discussion and uh, let me know what you think. And I hope, hope it's useful and I hope you enjoy the tool. Thanks.